the real goal, I think, of your entire degree as a CS major should be to minimize magic. Right. For most people in the world, if you have them look at Google or some game on their computer or what they're running on their, their mobile phone, it's pretty much all magic to them. They might get pretty good at using it, but they have no understanding what's going on uh, when they do it. And as a computer science student, what you should be doing is turning that magic after however many years you spend at however an elite university you go to um, into something that's all understandable. And that's not because you don't want things to be magical. It's because once you understand it, you can do your own magical things. But by the end of your computer science degree, you should feel like you pretty much understand everything that's going on between these, these high-level applications that do really cool things and a very low level how they're working. Um, and I'll give you a little more sort of detail about how that fits into the, the classes you've taken. If you started with, with CS1110, that's turning some little slither of this path into not being magic. Right? You understand something about how to write a high-level program that does some simple things. You don't learn much about how that program runs. You don't learn much about how you can make a, a large system like Google work. Um, and at this bottom layer, depending on whether you're, you're computing uh, computer engineering or computer science, um, you know, there, there's some level of physics where you're getting into quantum mechanics and things that um, at least I certainly don't understand well enough to tell you how they work. But we're sort of starting from the level of the transistor, which I think um, you can you know, go into a lot of depth in how transistors work. I think it's okay if that's magic, and transistors are pretty magical. Um, and then other classes filled in various steps along this chain between these two. Um, and a lot of the classes that we take are sort of covering a few different parts in this chain. So we're not sort of necessarily going consistently or in a particular direction through the layers. Um, and the goal for this class is really to fill in most of these missing layers. Right? So between sort of the architecture layer that you had um, understanding how instructions and memory was represented in 2150, and you learned sort of how high-level programs work, there's a lot of things going on that are still a mystery, um, unless you've, you've learned them some other way. Um, so we're going to try to fill in uh, most of those gaps. Um, and some of the gaps are at, at the low level. Um, how a program actually executes. Some of them are, are more at the high level. How do you build really big complex systems and make them work? Um, but my hope is by the end of this class, there should be very few things about computer systems that you would think of as magic, that you wouldn't necessarily understand all the, the algorithms that are used for some particular service, but you would feel like if, if you needed to understand them and, and you had time and the right resources, you could understand them and there's nothing you know, magical going on that, that you wouldn't know enough to be able to figure out. That's our you know, core academic goal of the course, is to understand more about how computers work. I should emphasize that there are two things that are, are not the goal for this course that people might think are the goal, um, especially from the name. So it's not about learning how to build an op operating system. We'll certainly learn many things relevant to that, um, but that's not a core goal for the class, that I, I think um, Actually, building a complete operating system is a pretty huge undertaking, and it's not something that is that necessary for most computer science students to know. Um, it's certainly something worthwhile to do, um, but it's not, not the main goal of this course. Um, the other thing that's not the, the main goal for this course is learning about Rust. Um, and the domain name may give the wrong impression that that's what I think the main purpose of the class is. Um, and you are going to spend a lot of time programming in Rust, and I think you'll learn interesting things by doing that and, and develop a lot as programmers by doing that. Um, but that's just a tool that we're using. Our, our main goal is really to learn more about how computers work. Um, and there are two big reasons why we do that. Why do you think it's important to know more about how computers work, to understand all these abstraction layers, what's going on inside them that you might not have understood from previous classes? Do we actually need to? Understand those things, or is it OK if everything's magic, or at least some parts of things are still magic? Yeah. OK, good, yeah. So if you're building high-level programs and they're not working the way you want, not performing the way you want, or they're failing in mysterious ways, um, if some of the parts between your program and how it's running are magic, you're going to get stuck trying to figure that out, and not um, especially if that's where the problems are. Right. 
So understanding more about how computers work is actually really important to building high-level programs, even if you're not implementing a whole operating system yourself. Did you have another point? Yeah. Good, yeah. So definitely, and this is true whether it's a high-level program or a low-level program, to get the best use of the resources that you have, the more you understand about how they work and how they're managed, and uh, the more control you have over them, the better opportunity you have to use them efficiently. So that's one of the big goals of this class, that you'll become a better programmer by understanding more about what's going on, and this will enable you, hopefully, to build really cool things. Um, maybe succeed in grad school or get more interesting jobs and, and get stuff like that. Um, the other reason that, that I also think is, is important, um, and this is not you know, uh, primarily meant to be a vocational class, right? but we want to study these things because we think they're actually interesting to the non-tech. And there are lots of very intellectually interesting problems in how to build an operating system and the things that we'll learn about in this class. Um, there's also a lot of culture behind operating systems, and we'll get into some of, some of the culture as well. Um, now, these two goals may not apply to all of you, because um, I know some of you are taking this class because it's required for your major. Um, if your goals don't align well with the goals of the class, um, you should figure out something else to do. And you can talk to me. We can figure out some alternative. I don't want you to be taking the class when your goals don't match what um, I think the, the goals for the class are. Um, and this may scare some of you that um, you'll get in trouble with a department head, or maybe, I guess I'll probably be the one who gets in trouble with a department chair, or they'll go up to a dean, and you're not supposed to sort of say you don't have to satisfy the, um, the degree requirements. But I can always bring in the top-level administrator if we have any troubles, um, which of course is Mr. Jefferson, and make sure that we're doing what Mr. Jefferson would want. And this is what Jefferson said when he started the university, that he wanted it to be so broad and liberal and modern as to be worth patronizing with public support and to be a temptation for the youth of other states to come and drink. Um, we're doing pretty well on this. Um, <laughs> maybe we're not doing quite as well on this one these days. But um, uh, he also had the vision. You know, the university didn't have any majors, didn't have any degrees, didn't have any president. It was for Jeffersonian students who came because they wanted to learn things that would empower them. And that is certainly why I hope, um, hope you are all here. And that doesn't mean that he wanted you to be lazy. So this is a description of what Jefferson was doing when he was in college. So first, before he came, he was you know, well-versed in Greek and Latin. Um, and he was studying really the kinds of things that a computer science studies. Um, they didn't have computer science yet. In 1760 at William and Mary, they were a little behind the times. Um, but he was studying the kinds of things that, that um, are pretty close to that and was studying for, for 15 hours a day. So um, he didn't have Facebook and other things to distract, distract him back then. So it was maybe a little easier. That's the overall goal for the course. Um, I want to talk a little bit about my goal for the lectures because they may be a little different from what many of you expect. and. I want you to know what you should expect from the lectures. So these are kinds of goals that um, students may expect lectures to be, that, that I'm trying to convey some complex technical ideas and teach you things that you need to know to succeed on the, the course assignments. Um, none of these are actually my goal for the class. Um, so lectures like this are a really bad way to convey technical ideas. Um, you're much better off um, learning technical ideas in other ways. Um, you know, even reading Wikipedia is probably better than sitting in a lecture class if you want to learn some technical thing yourself. Um, so uh, that is not the goal of lectures. Um, it's also not the goal to teach you what you need to know for the projects. That's really the flip of what we do. The point of the projects is to teach you things that I want you to learn in the course. Um, and the point of the lectures is to build off the projects or to, to build into them, but not to teach you things that you need to learn for the projects. Um, and you shouldn't be surprised if what you need to do for the problem sets involve learning things on your own that we didn't cover in class. Um, that's going to be pretty common. Um, uh, not being fired is, is probably a good thing. And I think um, you have to show up to class at least once or twice a semester to avoid being fired. Um, but I have tenure, so that's not that hard. <laughs> so we're down to keeping you awake um, for 75 minutes. And as, as a speaker, you know, it's kind of 
unpleasant to speak to an audience where people are falling asleep. On the other hand, most of you probably are not getting enough sleep as it is, so would benefit from having some extra sleep time. Um, so that's kind of a wash. And as far as dumb jokes, I do the best I can, but there are lots of funnier things. Um, you can Google Kevin Redman and see if you agree with him. OK, so none of those are my, my goal for the lectures. Um, my real goal is to provide context and meaning for the things that you're going to learn on your own. That the technical ideas in the class, you know, I will really cover some, you know, touch on some of them in class. I don't expect you to really learn them from the lectures so much. You're going to learn a lot more from what you do in the problem sets and from what you do on your own. But my hope is that the lectures will provide some more context and meaning behind those texts. Let me give you an overview of what the course assignments will be. And I should emphasize that the problem sets are really suggestions. Um, they're what I think would be a worthwhile thing to do um, to learn the things that I think are important. If you have a better idea, either because you want to learn something else or you have a better idea how to learn the things that we're trying to cover, um, you should convince me that it's a better idea and then you should do that instead. So um, you should definitely not feel constrained by the problem sets. Um, that said, if you don't convince me that you have something better to do, then you should do the problem sets that are assigned. Um, and I do think they are, are worthwhile for um, pretty much everyone. Um, and there'll be uh, four main problem sets and a final project. Um, the, the first one is uh, not really a problem set, um, but I want to make sure everyone gets started, gets set up, gets going on the REST tutorial um, and course survey early. So that's going to be due um, uh, early. The, the major ones, you're going to go through a sequence where you end up building a high performance, flexibly scheduled web server um, that incorporates a shell. So you're going to learn about processes by building your own shell. And you're going to learn about things like scheduling and memory management by, by building a web server. And then the last problem set, you're going to do some hacking on a relatively simple kernel. And the final project is to do anything you want. And I'm going to be quite vague about what that means, because I think you'll do more creative, interesting things the vaguer I am. Um, it will frustrate some of you, as this quote suggests. Um, but that's probably a good thing. Um, uh, now, I'm going to go a little bit against that by showing you a few examples of projects that students did last, uh, last semester. Because I want you to start thinking of ideas now. If you come up with a really great idea for a project, then you can start working on it earlier and substitute it for one of the other assignments. Um, so one example is a project where they scanned the UVA directory and built a uh, web extension and a service that you can use to look up uh, people by their UV IDs. Um, there are links to all of these on the course site, so you can try them out yourself. Um, I, another one is this project. We talk a lot about understanding the costs of different things. So one of the things that you need to understand to be a better programmer, but also as a consequence of understanding more about what's going on in computing systems, is that the difference in the amount of time it takes to read some data might be you know, billions of times more expensive than reading some other data. Um, and there's a web page that Peter Norvig made that looks at some of these costs. Um, and that was done more than 10 years ago. And uh, these students looked at sort of how to update that and built an Android app that would actually compute the costs of various things that you might need to do in a program um, and collect that data. The next one is what we're actually going to use for problem set four. So last semester, we didn't have a problem set to hack on a kernel. And I think this was one of the main deficiencies of the class last semester that students didn't. We talked a lot about how kernels worked and looked at some low-level code in the Linux kernel, but students didn't actually work on it themselves. Um, but one of the groups for their project did build a simple kernel using Rust. Another one uh, I'll talk about. So how many of you actually read Hacker News? Okay. I, and I don't know if I want to encourage you to read this or not, because it's a huge time sink. Um, it's also probably the easiest way to keep up with all the things that are trending in the computing and startup communities. Um, but if you went to it a few days ago, the, the number one ranked thing was about the, the latest version of Rust being released, which is what we'll use this semester. And the top comment about that was about some of the features they liked. And the number two feature there was actually someone's project last semester. So this was uh, Kiet's project was to add dead code warnings to the Rust compiler. 
Um, and he got it done well enough that they were able to actually integrate it into the 0.9 version of the compiler that all of you will be using. Those are some examples of projects, um, but you shouldn't feel confined by that. And, and all of those examples were ones where someone actually built some software, um, and that's not necessarily a requirement. Another um, kind of project some students did was understanding things and writing, writing documents about them, in, including uh, building a better Rust tutorial, which you'll also be using some later in this class.